When I got into My Hero Academia and the character of Hawks was introduced, I never thought that anybody else in the world of My Hero could overtake him as my favorite character in the series. And then Mirko showed up! <laughs> I never thought that My Hero Academia would make a character that I personally relate to so heavily. So in this video, I, or I guess more accurately, we, because Asuka also wanted to get in on this video, we're going to analyze her character and also relate to you guys why we relate to her so much. Let's get started. If I had to choose one word to describe Mirko, it would be free. She's someone that isn't tied down to the traditional way of superhero society. In fact, she's the pioneer of a new type of pro hero. Let's start from the beginning. The first time we see her chronologically is within the spin-off slash prequel manga, My Hero Academia Vigilantes. And we're not going to go over the entire event of the Underground Masquerade arc, so if you want to know the full story, then I recommend you read the manga. We're only going to focus on the parts with Rumi. The one thing that Mirko loves more than anything is a fight. Fighting is her passion. It's what makes her feel the most at home. Even in her junior high days, Rumi crashed several fight clubs in Hiroshima, becoming known as the legendary schoolgirl hooligan, Bunny Eru Sako. She was eventually apprehended, and in the end, she vanished after being taken into custody and the name of her school was exposed. She was consequently expelled. She eventually enrolled into an unnamed hero school in Hiroshima. A lot of pro heroes you see in the present day, majority of them have gone to UA, but Mirko never went to UA. It's a popular opinion that if you want to become a great pro hero, you need to go to UA. But Mirko proved that theory wrong. Sometime later on a school trip to Osaka, she and two of her friends got lost, but a young fat gum gave them directions. So the girls prepare to continue on their trip. However, Rumi catches a whiff of her favorite thing, blood and sweat. And the scent indicates that a battle is taking place nearby. Before her friends can stop her, she takes off in the direction of where said battle is taking place. Finally arriving at the place, she is eager to participate in the fun as well. Just from this, you can already tell how much Rumi loves fighting. Rumi broke into the underground masquerade, interrupting a fight between two fighters, while also stealing a tiger mask so she could conceal her identity, saying if there's a fight to be had, then you better not leave her out of it. Introducing herself as the masked mystery beauty, Tiger Bunny. The audience, confused by this name, asked her if she was a tiger or a bunny. And Rumi replied, both. But if you're really pushing the issue, I'm a tiger-ish bunny. Which is honestly a fantastic way of describing Mirko. As fast and agile as a bunny, and also as strong and fierce as a tiger. Eventually, one of the people recognized her as Usaka. Gotcha! Rumi tried to deny this and hide her true identity, but nobody was buying the bullshit, so. Her cover was completely blown, so she just said fuck it and let's just fight. Yeah, she... <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, she, she doesn't sweat the small stuff. The two fighters lectured her about her actions, saying she needs to have etiquette, especially with underground fight clubs like this. I'm like, dude, what? You're literally running an underground illegal fight club and you're talking about etiquette? Sure. <sighs> Anyways, they attack her and Rumi dodged them and fought back, easily kicking their butts before challenging everyone in the club to fight. The rest of the audience got real enthusiastic. They all attempted to rush into the cage, with Rumi beating the hell out of all of them. And in this moment, Mirko is having the time of her life. This is what she lives for, and I can definitely relate to the feeling. She's an absolute genius in a fight, being able to adapt to the flow of battle which you guys will see even more later on. In this arc, we see the rapper, aka Kendo Rapa from season four of My Hero Academia. O'Clock, who was one of the main characters of this arc, asked both of them for help to escape the underground structure and meet back up with the police force waiting out front. He recognized Rumi's uniform, saying he would clear things up with her school. Rumi started panicking a bit, saying that they really don't need to know about this and then ask how she can help. Rappa, now knowing that Rumi is a hero candidate, is wondering what the world is coming to if a chick like her is calling herself a hero. But Rumi says she has the number one thing that a hero needs, kick power. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga! Fucking you know nothing about- She says that a kick is five times as strong as a punch, 
so one kick to the head can take down even the biggest of bad guys. And this is exactly how Mirko operates as a pro hero later on. Kick first and ask questions later. She operates this way because she wants to resolve the issue and conflict as soon as possible, before anyone gets hurt or worse. All of the details and stuff can come later as long as nobody dies. And with this method is how she became the fifth ranked hero in Japan. O'Clock asked Rumi and the rapper to make their way also acting as a decoy, although he also asked them not to use their full powers on people transformed by the gas. If you know Rappa as a character, he hates having to hold back. But Rumi doesn't have an issue with this. Rumi knows that when she becomes a pro hero, she'll have to hold back against villains she's not allowed to kill. One thing to note about Rumi is that she hates being on the sidelines. Like she stated earlier, if there's a fight to be had, you better not leave her out of it. At this point in the story, she's a hero in training, so she ain't about to run away when there's a villain that needs to be taken down. After all is said and done in this arc, O'Clock tells her that the cops might give her some compensation if she mentions her at the official report, but Rumi declines, since she'll be making money on her own as a pro hero before long. She says the next time they meet, she'll probably be a fully blown hero. She asks Rappa what he's gonna do next, but she replies saying, I don't know, me being me is the only way I know, which I can also relate to. Rumi now knowing that Rappa is going to most likely be a villain, she says she'll save her less deadly kicks for guys like him, before finally hopping away. Rumi now understands that there are people out there who aren't just villains for the sake of it. There are people out there like Rappa who enjoys the thrill of battle similar to her. And not every single villain is the same. Alright, so now we're gonna move on to when Rumi finally becomes a pro hero. So as you've probably gathered by now, Rumi is very strong-willed. She's a hard ass. You really, you, you, re you really can't tell this girl shit. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. She speaks her mind even if it causes confrontation. And she respects others who do the same. So when we first see her in the pro hero arc at the Japanese hero billboard rankings, the first thing she says is how joining a team makes you weak. Rumi believes that heroes who join teams are cowards as they could just be relying on their teammates' strength rather than relying on their own. But Rumi isn't above assisting others, as we saw in the Paranormal Liberation War arc. And she came to the aid of Endeavor and Hawks after seeing their battle with Hood on the news. Now, when it comes to her solo disposition, she does make a fair point. For example, if some heroes team up and one of the heroes on that team decides to let the other heroes handle everything without helping much at all, or decides to take the final blow against a villain which would then give them all the glory. Which wouldn't be surprising in this hero society. But I really do believe that Mirko is starting to understand that teamwork isn't always a negative thing. And to me, this is very evident in the arc after the next. But that's season 7 content. And I really only want to focus on her appearances in the anime and the Vigilantes manga. So I'll wait to make a video on that later or maybe when season 7 finally comes out. Alright, alright. So now let's get into the part that makes Mirko a really cool hero. Mirko is a completely brand new breed of a hero. Majority of the heroes in the My Hero universe have an agency. Hawks, Sir Night Eye, and many others. But Rumi doesn't have one at all. She's a pioneer of a whole new type of hero. She wanders around all of Japan, going from hotel to hotel, fighting villains while she's there. She's a freaking vagabond hero! This also explains how she made her way to Hawks and Endeavor when Dobby showed up. She was in the area, she saw it on the news, and hopped over to help. This is how she became one of the top-ranking heroes so fast, solving as many cases as possible while wandering Japan. So in the Paranormal Liberation War arc is where Mirko really shines. And her fight against the high-end Nomus is what solidified her as my favorite character in the series. So when she gets to Garaki's lab, she attempts to kick him to find out if he's the real one and not a clone. But then she got interrupted by Johnny, rest in peace Johnny. <laughs> Soon after, Garaki unleashes the high-end Nomus and they send her flying. This most likely would have incapacitated majority of people, but Rumi stopped the impact with her legs. Her quirk rabbit allows her to do anything a rabbit can do, but even better. Similar to Suyu Asui's quirk. After she recovers from the impact, she says she's just getting warmed up. This shows just how much damage she can take and her love for battle. But we haven't even gotten to the part that really showcases this. She hears Gadaki typing away on his keyboard with her rabbit ears, jumps past the Nomus and makes her way to him. But of course, the Nomus stop her. She uses Luna Ring to blow away two of the Nomus and her arm gets cut. She notices she did damage to them, 
but not enough to do them in. But then the Nomu robot uses a spatial distortion quirk to break her arm. But she keeps going. In fact, she actually ripped it off because it was slowing her down. Like we said, she can take some serious damage and she can still keep fighting. Like, it's insane. So she uses Luna Fall to smash the Nomu under her and immediately goes after the one that took her arm. Knowing that if she didn't, he would be an issue later. And she says that opponents who attack from a distance are usually not the best in close combat. This just proves that she's a genius when it comes to battle. She uses Luna Tijeras to rip off the Nomu's head and smash it into the crown killing it in the process. Then she uses her hair to wrap up her busted arm so she can keep doing her job. Now taking notes that she has to smash their heads in in order to kill them, and also saying that these guys are easier to deal with than other villains with unknown weaknesses. And now we get to the quote that made her me and Tomoe's favorite character in My Hero, and just one of our favorite characters in anime and manga. I live every day as if I'm not gonna see another one. That way I'll have no regrets when I die. <laughs> But you zombies are out of luck. Mirko's not going down. And like I said in the last video I made about Mirko, I relate to this heavily. She lives her life the same way I live mine. It's really cool and feels good to have a character that I can relate to like this. She's a wanderer, like I am. She's battle hungry, like I am. And she lives her life day by day like I do. This is why we relate to her. Honestly, I really do love Rumi as a character. She really means a lot to me. Same here. Asuka said everything I was going to say. We both relate to her in these aspects, and we want to show how much we love her by making this video. So, we have one last part to cover. Asuka, you want to do the honors? <laughs> Hell yeah! So Mirko is continuing to fight the Nomus, and she notices she can't even land a hit on them anymore. Mirko knows her body better than anyone. She knows it's not because she's slowing down or getting weaker. It's because the Nomos have fully awakened. When it comes to battle, Mirko is extremely perceptive, being able to tell if something changes about her opponents. Even though the situation is bad, she's still having a blast. She decides to prioritize the mission and stop Garaki ASAP. She sustains so many injuries, but she's still pushing on like they're not even there. The Nomos grab her hair, but she just rips it off so she can keep going. She's friggin' insane and I love it! She says that if she's gonna die, then it'll be after she achieves her goal. She makes it to the tube Shigaraki is in and attempts to smash it. But one of the Nomu stabs her in the right leg with its tentacle. But of course, that still doesn't stop her. Endeavor comes in and smashes the Nomu into the ground. And that gives her time to continue the attack. She says that the one thing about heroes is that they never quit. The moment she saw Shigaraki, her body knew exactly what to do. It's her rabbit survival instinct. It told her she couldn't allow him to be released no matter what it takes. She unleashes her fourth ultimate move, Luna Arc. Luna Arc! It smashes the tube, but it's not enough to completely destroy it. She ends up getting dragged back by the Nomu, but Endeavor comes through with the save. He uses his flames to cauterize her wounds. And even after all this, she stands back up and even asks Endeavor if she should kick the Nomu. Like, dude, rest! But that's what I love about her, she never gives up. So, Mirko was out of commission for the rest of the arc. But damn, did she put on a show. Rumi Usagiyama, the fifth ranked Japanese hero, Mirko. She's a pioneer of a brand new type of hero who wanders Japan looking for villains to take down. She lives her life day by day so that she won't have any regrets when she dies. She's strong, stubborn, battle hungry, and most importantly, a hero. And that's it for the analysis. I have no idea how long this video will be, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed and I hope this made you appreciate Mirko a bit more. Asuka, thank you for joining me in this endeavor. This was fun. Yeah, of course I was down to do this. She's kind of my favorite character and all, you know. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment below what you think about Mirko. Oh, and let me know if there's something you think we missed. See, See you guys, guys later. later. Oh, and uh, before I go, uh, go follow the voice actor of Asuka, Brenna. She is the GOAT. She's the absolute GOAT. <laughs> uh, she's an amazing voice actor, and uh, thank you so much for voicing in this video. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, bye.